video we are going to go through mcqs in medical physiology so these are some of the multiple choice questions in medical physiology so the first question reads the water content of lean body mass is about a 30 mils per 100 grams b 50 mils per 100 grams c 70 mils per 100 grams and d highly variable so the correct answer for water content of lean body mass is 70 mils per 100 grams that is the correct answer which is c question two body mass index is calculated as body mass index is calculated as a weight in pounds by height in meters b weight in cages by height in meters c weight in kg divided by square of height in meter squared c and d weight in kg divided by body surface area so the correct answer for question two is c to find the body mass index you simply get your weight in cages divided by the square of height in meter squared that is how to find the body mass index so correct answer is c question three the most abundant cation in intracellular fluid is the most abundant cation in intracellular fluid is a sodium b potassium c magnesium and d calcium so when you say cation is simply a positive charged ion so on this table here we have cations and anions which are in the extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid and their normal ranges so those are the ranges so for for sodium it is from 135 to 140, 147 in the extracellular fluid and in intracellular fluid it is 10 to 15 so meaning sodium is abundant in extracellular fluid but our question is asking for the intracellular fluid what is the the most abundant cut ion in intracellular fluid so in intracellular fluid we simply consider the intracellular fluid here and we have this one here which is range which ranges from 120 to 150 120 to 150 which is potassium meaning the most abundant cut ion in intracellular fluid is potassium so the correct answer is b so we move on to question four the most abundant anion in extracellular fluid is a bicarbonate b chloride c phosphate d protein anion so the correct answer for question four is chloride chloride is the most abundant anion a negatively charged ion in extracellular fluid so we can also use this table here we can see that extracellular fluid a negatively charged particle which is most abundant is chlorine chlorine here is a negative charge and it is 95 to 105 when we look at another anion which is bicarbonate it ranges from 22 to 28 which is less so the most abundant is chloride there which is 95 to 105 so the correct answer for question 4 is b we move on to question 5 extracellular fluid volume is determined by so how can we determine extracellular fluid a plasma sodium b plasma protein concentration c 
the amount of sodium in the extracellular fluid. So we know that the most abundant cation in the extracellular fluid is sodium. It constitutes all, almost all the extracellular fluid. So to find the volume of the extracellular fluid is similar. Uh, we can use the amount of sodium. We, we can use the amount of sodium to simply find the volume of extracellular fluid. Okay, in the extracellular fluid, not in the plasma, because plasma is simply a compartment of uh, extracellular fluid. So we have the total body water or total body fluid, which is divided into intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. And now the extracellular fluid, which is ECF, is divided into plasma, which is this blue dip. Uh, compartment there and interstitial fluid so to find the volume of extracellular fluid we measure the amount of sodium in the extracellular fluid not in plasma plasma is simply a fraction of the extracellular fluid there so the correct answer here for B the, uh, is C we find the amount of sodium in the extracellular fluid to find the volume of to determine the extracellular volume so we move on to question six the body fluid compartment that contains more osmotically active particles in relation to other fluid compartments in the same individual is the body fluid compartment that contains more osmotically active particles is so we are relating this compartment to other fluid compartment in the same individual so which one among these a intracellular fluid b plasma c interstitial fluid so which one among these compartment has more osmotically active particles so among these the one which has more is intracellular fluid because this is one of the largest compartment in the human body so it's uh, plasma and interstitial these two makes the extracellular fluid compartment but uh, intracellular fluid is one of the most largest uh, compartment fluid compartment and it has more osmotically active particles as compared to plasma and interstitial fluid so the correct answer for question six is a we move on to question seven the following values are obtained on a sample of serum from a child that has clinical evidence of dehydration so the following values are obtained from a sample of serum from a child that has clinical evidence of dehydration so the serum sodium is equal to 135 millimoles per liter and serum glucose is at 540 milligrams per deciliter and serum urea nitrogen is equal to 56 milligrams per deciliter so the question continues to say the osmo the osmolarity of serum is expected to to be close to so they are asking us to find to find the osmolarity of serum given these values there in a hydrated child so to find or to calculate the osmolarity we use this formula here so osmolarity of serum is equals to two sodium 2 multiplied by concentration of sodium plus glucose divided by 18 plus urea divided by 2.8 2.8 so we simply multiply the concentration of sodium by 2 which is 135 in this case we have 135 there millimoles per dense liter we multiply it by 2 here and then from there we divide the concentration of glucose by 18 
you know it is 540 so we divide by 18 which is that there and then we also we add the concentration of uh, urea divided by 2.8 so doing that calculation there we are going to find 320 milli osmos per kg of water so it is 320 so let's check for the correct answer here so a we have 290 milli osmos b we have 300 c we have 310 and d we have 320 which is the correct answer so the correct answer is 320 for this question so what you do you simply multiply the sodium concentration by 2 and then from there you add this to 540 which is the concentration of glucose you divide it by 18 and then from there you add that to the concentration of urea which is 56 you divide it by 2.8 then the answer should give you 320 so we move on to question 8 question 8 says the following values are obtained on a sample of serum from a child that has clinical evidence of dehydration it is similar to question 8 question 7 so this time around we have uh, sodium concentration 130 glucose it is 540 and urea it is at 56 so the question continues to say assuming there are no toxins toxins there are no toxins in extracellular fluid the effective serum osmolality is approximately so this time around we do not have toxins so when you look at these uh, concentrations here the most uh, the only toxin here is urea nitrogen so assuming that this toxin is not there what is the effective serum osmolality so use the same calculation where we, we uh, but this time around we exclude the toxin which is urea but we put in concentration sodium and glucose only so we said to find the effective osmolality what you do is simply uh, multiply the concentration of sodium which is one say uh, 130 by 2 then to this you add uh, the concentration of glucose divided by 18 so we are going to say 540 divided by 18 divide by 18 so we do not include this one because it is a toxin and they have told us to say assuming there are no toxins so if you multiply this and add uh, 5 4 divided by 18 you should find 290 290 as the correct answer which is a so that's how to find the effective serum osmolarity for this question we move on to question 9 so the same calculation but we have excluded for urea so question 9 reads what percentage of osmolality of plasma in a health well hydrated individual is attribu uh, attributed uh, attributable to sodium and its accompanying anions what percentage of osmolality of plasma in a health well hydrated individual is attributable to sodium and its accompanying anions a 30% b 50 percent c 70 percent and d 90 percent so sodium and its accompanying anions they contribute 90 percent and proteins adding with protein protein contribute five percent so it is about 95 percent 95 percent when you add uh, the percentage of uh, proteins and sodium and its accompanying anions so the correct answer is d sodium and its accompanying anions they contribute 90 percent of the osmolality of plasma
Question 10. We move on to question 10. Question 10 reads, which of the following contributes least to the osmolality of plasma? A, we have glucose, B, proteins, C, sodium, and D, urea. And someone can say urea. Okay, so the least, the one which contributes least uh, to the osmolality of plasma is proteins. Proteins contribute 5%. Okay, so this uh, urea also contributes the least, but uh, the one which contributes the least is uh, proteins. Proteins contribute 5%. Urea follows uh, is after proteins. What is followed is urea and glucose and sodium. But on this question, it is proteins. These ones, urea, uh, it is distributed evenly across the cell membrane. But it is not the least. But the least on this, in this case here, it is proteins. So correct answer is B. We will move on to question 11. The osmolar concentration of sodium in normal human plasma is approximately... The osmolar concentration of sodium in normal human plasma is approximately so here they are just asking the range the normal range for sodium a we have 275 to 295 milli osmos per liter b 135 to 147 milli osmos per liter and c 240 to 250 milli osmos per liter and d 95 to 110 millosmoles. So for this question, I sh I showed you a table for the normal ranges for anions and cations in extracellular and intracellular fluid. So you can check on that and let me see your answer in the comment section below. So to support my small YouTube channel, please don't forget to like subscribe and leave your comment in the comment section below thank you so much for watching